What is the fastest way to edit your photos in Lightroom? Is it using keyboard shortcuts? Is it using Lightroom presets? Presets are good, but they're not as good as this. This is the brand new Logitech MX Creative Console, a fully customizable console that allows you to edit way faster in Lightroom. So in today's video, let's really dive into the details of what this editing console is all about and what's it like to use as a professional photographer. And I'm gonna start right now. Now, editing consoles are nothing new, and they've been around on the market for quite a few years, but I don't see a lot of photographers or creative people using them. And that's because editing consoles can be quite complicated. Usually they're quite big, quite bulky, and very complicated to set up and use. In most cases, they're usually more hassle than they're worth. So when Logitech reached out to me, I was a bit hesitant because I've tried editing consoles before and they've never really gelled with my editing workflow. But after using the MX Creative Console from Logitech, it has genuinely changed my mind on editing consoles. Now in the box, you get the Creative Keypad, which is this, and the Creative Dial Pad. And essentially it's an editing console that allows you to work with the entire Adobe Creative Cloud suite, as well as your own computer's operating system, allowing you to create your own customizable shortcuts, as well as changing things like volume, brightness, and even opening up apps and web pages with just one button press. So let's start off talking about my favorite, which is the keypad. Now the keypad is the one that I find most useful, and that's because of the nine display keys that you can see on screen. These are very useful because they are changeable and customizable depending on which app that you're using. So if you're jumping from Lightroom to Premiere Pro, these are screens, so they will actively change. Now this is the one that I've got for my standard operating system. I'll quickly talk you through some of the buttons. So to change them, all you need to do is download Logitech options, which I've got on screen. I'll go ahead and open up the settings for the keypad. So if I go ahead and change customizable keys, you can see that I've got Premiere Pro, uh, Illustrator, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, and if I go ahead and click on this one here, this is my general settings for Mac OS. And you can see I've got a bunch of them. So this one here, if I go ahead and click this, you can see it immediately opens up Google for me. Or if I go ahead and click this one here, this is my little YouTube button. So it automatically loads up YouTube and you can see this is my main YouTube screen. So very, very useful. Now again, I've got this one here, which is simply my operating system. So the settings inside my computer. So that is really useful as well. Now to change that, all you'll need to do is simply click on it and you can see this one says operating system. But on the side here, on the right hand side, you can see you can drag and drop anything that you like. And you can also search in the top right hand corner. So maybe you wanted to open up Premiere Pro, for example. What you're going to do is type in Premiere Pro and then simply drag it over that button. Then you can customize the little icon. So for example, if I go ahead and open up System Preferences, you can see I can completely change it from color to orientation to the actual icon itself. You can also download icons as well. But let me show you what I've got set up in Lightroom. So what I'll do is I'll just scan over to this is currently Lightroom. And as you can see, it automatically changed for me. Now this is my main setup. So when I'm editing photos, this is what I predominantly use. So on the top here, I've got copy develop settings and then paste develop settings. And I've got a few tools that I actively use. So instead of using keyboard shortcuts, which again, you have to remember, you can actively use this. So for example, if I want to open up the crop tool, I simply go ahead and click the crop tool. And then once I've opened that, again, it will change even further. So I can change the guidelines. So if I go ahead and click, you can see I can turn them on and off, or I can change what grid I've got. So for example, I could choose a uh, uh, rule of thirds, uh, the golden ratio, and I've got a whole bunch of ones that I can actively use. And then once I'm happy, just simply go ahead and click exit. It is that useful. Now again, it's the same situation with masking. I'll go ahead and click masking. You can see I've got a whole bunch of masks which I've got lit up on here, as well as delete mask in the center. And then again, if I just wanna exit out of here, it's just one button. So it's like using keyboard shortcuts if you're used to using it, but what's really nice is they're easy to remember. Because the big thing about keyboard shortcuts, even if you are a professional photographer, you'll have to remember what are the keyboard shortcuts? Like is R, let me if I go ahead and click it. Yeah, that is the crop tool. But you have to remember that that's the crop tool where with this, it actively tells you. So it's a little LCD screen, which I wish, again, I really like about that feature. You can also have multiple pages. So you've obviously got nine, but you can have up to 15 pages as well. 
So these are the two buttons that you can navigate your pages. If I go ahead and click, you can see I've got a whole bunch of pages here. So for example, if I wanna quickly show you the before and after of this photo, all I do is click the before and after button. So I do then before, and after, and it is that simple. As well as I've got this button here, which resets all my settings. And at the bottom here, I've got a little progress bar. So when I'm editing photos, I usually put them in a, a progress. So red, yellow, and green. Red means I like the composition, but I haven't edited it yet. Yellow means I've edited it, but I haven't applied masks. And then green means I've completely finished. So you can see all of these photos here, if I quickly navigate through them, all of them are green, because all of them are complete. So if I go back, I can then go ahead and click the develop library, and it takes me back to my library page. So very useful and very customizable, and that is the big thing. Usually editing consoles aren't very customizable. They're set in, you know, they're, they're not physical displays, and that's what makes this versus other creative consoles very useful. And in the box, you also get this as well, which is the creative dial pad, which complements the main keypad very well. You've got four customizable buttons as well as two customizable dials. You've got one for horizontal scrolling and then one for vertical scrolling. Now you've got these four buttons on the side. So this one here I've got for copy, paste, and then I've got redo and undo, which are very helpful, especially in Lightroom. And then the main dial pad, if I'm in Lightroom, this one I can scroll through all of my photos. So I can scroll through, find which one I like to edit. Let's say this one here. And if I wanna make sure it's in focus, then I've got this little dial here, the horizontal, which I can again zoom in and zoom out. And then obviously one button click takes me up to the full screen. So it's very useful to use both at the same time. You can even customize the main dial to change certain settings with inside Lightroom. Like for example, exposure, contrast, or even clarity. Now obviously this one here is powered by USB-C because obviously it takes a little bit more power. But what's nice about this one is it's fully wireless by Bluetooth. And all it does is it takes two AAA batteries. So I usually have this one on the left hand side of my computer and then the main dial pad on the right. And they're so small that you can actually travel with them. In fact, I've recently been on two trips, one to La Palma and one to Schwalbad where I've taken all of these photos here and I was able to bring them with me. Something that I wouldn't have been able to do with any of the larger creative consoles. And because these ones are fully customizable, I can change them on the fly. I was actually sitting on the plane and I was working through it and I was thinking, oh, I don't actually like having the masking button. I'd prefer it be something else. And I can simply change it within the settings. So as you can see, the MX Creative Console is incredibly useful as a professional photographer, but also editor and even content creator. But you might be asking, well, how much is this? Because it could be quite expensive. Well, surprisingly, I think it's quite affordable, coming in at around 199 pounds. But it makes it even more affordable if you think you get three months three of Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, which for me, it's 56 pounds a month for the full Adobe Creative Cloud. So actually, it's less than 50 pounds if you go ahead and get the three months three if you've got the full Creative Cloud suite, which in my opinion, is incredible value for money. And for how much you use it, it's gonna pay itself in the amount of time that you're gonna be saving editing your photos or videos. So if you're someone like me and you're a bit hesitant on spending money on a editing console, and you weren't sure if it's gonna gel with your editing workflow, this genuinely has changed my mind. I find myself editing so much faster and editing on the go has become so much easier. Editing on a plane when you haven't got much room, having a dial pad like this and having a keypad that you can change and customize depending on how you like working is something that I wish all editing consoles did. I have an old editing console uh, that I just don't use anymore because it's just too big and bulky. But this one here is roughly the same size as my mouse, which is here. And it's more useful, I think, than a mouse if you've got yourself a keyboard. So if you haven't got yourself something like this and you are a professional photographer, I think you're genuinely missing out. And for the price, if you've got the full Creative Cloud suite, it being less than 50 quid, if you include the three months three, is great value for money. And I just wanna say thank you for Logitech for sending me this for review. Thank you to all my YouTube members that are currently supporting the channel. If you guys wanna support the channel and get some awesome perks, including free Lightroom presets, which also speed up your editing workflow, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next week.